So where do the CVAT equations come from? If we start with the easiest one, that's v equals u plus at, what this one is saying is if you accelerate for a, at a certain acceleration, so let's say you know, 3 meters per second per second for a certain time, let's say 2 seconds, uh, then the amount your velocity will increase is 3 times 2. You're increasing 3 meters per second each second for 2 seconds, so overall your speed increases by 6 meters per second, or 3 times 2. So a times t here is the increase in the velocity, and that takes us from u, the initial velocity, you add that on, and you get to v, which is the final velocity. And just thinking about that in terms of a velocity time graph, so if we have velocity on this axis and time on this one, then if we start at a particular velocity u and end at a velocity v uh, for a certain period of uh, time, so up to t, then a, the acceleration, is the gradient of this graph. It tells you how steeply or how fast the, um, uh, the velocity is increasing. So um, if we think about this uh, triangle here, we've got a certain time t, this is uh, at, because a is the gradient, and you can see that v is u plus uh, at. The next easiest one to think about is uh, s equals one half u plus v times t. Um, and one half u plus v is the uh, average speed, um, it's just the average of the initial and the final uh, velocities there going into a constant acceleration. We can see that's the uh, average speed. What this says is that the displacement is just the average speed times the times the time. So again, we can see this from the uh, on the graph as well. And uh, one half u plus v times t is the area of the uh, trapezium here because this is uh, height u, this is height uh, v, and the area of that trapezium is a half u plus v times t. And we know that the um, displacement is the area under a velocity time graph. Now we, we know those two Suvel equations, we can uh, combine them to find the other Suvel equations. So if we take v equals u plus at and substitute it into this one, we get s equals one half uh, u plus, and now we're going to rewrite v as u plus at, uh, or times t, and multiplying this out, uh, we get a half times two u times t, that's ut, and a half times at times t, that's one half at squared. So that's another one of the CVET equations. And actually, if we rewrite v equals u plus at as u equals v minus at, then we could do the same thing again, substitute that into this equation here, and that gives s equals one half v minus at instead of u plus v times t. And so multiplying out, we've got v plus v is 2v times a half times t, so that's just vt. And now minus at times a half times t is minus one half at squared. And we can see that on the graph as well. We've got uh, u times t is the area of this rectangle here, and this triangle has area half base times height, half t times at, which is one half at squared. Uh, that shows uh, this one here, the displacement, the area under the graph is ut plus a half at squared, and this rectangle is v times t, and this triangle here would also be a one half at squared, so we can also see that it's vt minus one half at squared. To derive the final CVAT equation, if we just start with those two uh, simplest ones again and rewrite them, uh, we're going to rewrite the one on the left as v minus u equals a times t, and the one on the right as u plus v, or we're going to write that as v plus u, uh, is equal to 2s divided by t. And then if we multiply v minus u by v plus u, uh, well v minus u is a t and v plus u is 2s over t, so we get that, and then the left hand side, either multiplying it out or recognizing it as the difference of two squares, we get v squared minus u squared, and on the right hand side the t's cancel to leave 2as, which is the last u equation, or you can also sometimes write that, so that written as v squared is u squared 
plus 2as. One of the really interesting things to note here is that all five of the Suvat equations which could be derived just from those first two. We thought about the uh, reasons that these first two were true and the other three we just derived algebraically. So in theory, any Suvat problem that you come across, you could solve just using those first two uh, equations, but in practice it's uh, a lot easier to uh, have all five to use to make the calculations uh, simpler.